here. Hello, YouTube. It's Rock Cran, RKN Post, Rocco the Crins, whatever. Um, I hope you're all having a lovely day. It's beautiful here in uh, Prescott Valley, Arizona. I mean, look out there. No one is uh, quarantined, of course, and social distancing is a thing, though. I mean, they ask us all to do that. But, I mean, even over there, I don't know if you can see it from here, but the Ace hardware, that's open. Uh, the credit union. Eh, anyways, I'm in a hotel room tonight, and, uh, yeah, feeling pretty good. Tried to upload this video yesterday, or, no, last night, couldn't upload any videos. It was freezing cold outside. 31 degrees with the wind howling. Talk about global warming, huh? <laughs> That's a joke. Anyhow, uh, I was talking about Sunny Day Real Estate band I absolutely love and have since like 1996 or so. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I remember when uh, I saw the video for Seven, their first single, I think. And uh, it was on MTV. We were I was in jail with some friends of mine. <laughs> Just how it goes when you're in a small town, the other guys in jail are, you know, usually people you know. But anyways, uh, it came on, and uh, boy did we jump around. And, like, it was an awesome song, and it just got everybody moving. So, not everyone, of course. There was guys sleeping or something, but that doesn't matter. Anyways, get out, and that's like my first priority is to go find their album, Diary, the first CD. And uh, I didn't get it until I moved to Arizona. But uh, that was the first thing I bought when I got here. With my first paycheck after uh, moving out here. I got Diary by Sunny Day Real Estate. And uh, wow, just what a fantastic record. I'm not going to say every song is a hit or anything, because I only ever saw that video for seven one time. You know, until YouTube put it up, you know, or they put it up on YouTube. But I mean, on, you know, back in the 90s, like, it only played once that I saw. So, you know, take that as you will. Uh, just saying, it, they, it turned me on, like, this band has something like their drummer and their bass player. That's uh William Goldsmith and uh Nate Mendel. Uh, they just do something amazing in that on that whole album, but in that first song that I heard too. I I just didn't know like there was modern bands that could you know at that time because everything sounded like grunge. They don't sound like grunge. They don't sound anything like a grunge band. They sound like something completely new. And I guess it was the birth of the emo movement. I'm not sure. I, people point at Fugazi for some reason. I always thought they were punks, but uh, <laughs> not like in a bad way. Just, you know, like a punk band. I always thought Fugazi was a punk band. But, uh. Or Fugazi, I don't know how you say it. Anyways, I always think of Sunny Day Real Estate as like kind of the birth of the emo movement. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I don't, because emo was fantastic. I don't know, a dozen years or so. A lot of great bands came out of that. Anyways, I'm only talking about uh, Sunny Day Real Estate on this one. And I guess Fugazi, or Fugazi, I don't know. Uh, anyways, that first album comes out, and... You know, I didn't have a chance to see him live or anything, but I, I listened to it a lot. It was in my car stereo all the time. Uh, and, you know, kind of, you kind of fade away from things. And the second album comes out a couple of years later, and uh, along with, like, a report on MTV News that they're done. Like, they broke up. <laughs> it's like, wait, just got this new album and they're already broken up? Ugh. <laughs> and of course, the, the I don't know what they call it. I think it's LP2 or the Pink Album, something like that. Uh, 
it's it's like Diary Part Two. Like they actually completed the next step because it's so much like the first album, but you know, just new songs. <laughs> Like, as if they had recorded, I don't know how many songs are on each album, but say like 25 songs. And they just, because the band broke up, they put out the second album with the rest of those songs from the first album. And that's, it's what it sounds like. It's so similar in tone, in lyrics, in uh, uh, music, like the playing of all the guys. But yeah, they they broke up. I, you know, I from what I understand, this is something I heard. Like uh, the lead singer Jeremy uh, Enik, E N I G K. I don't know how you pronounce that, but anyways, he locked himself in a hotel room for like a month and had some kind of spiritual awakening and didn't want to be in Sunny Day Real Estate anymore. <laughs> oh, and anyways, the name of the band was. Uh, Musings by the bass player, Nate. He's like, man, everything's on sale. Someday, they're going to make us pay for sunny days. <laughs> and that's that's where it comes from. And of course, I'm paraphrasing because I wasn't there. I didn't hear it. Uh, but yeah, that's where the name comes from. And uh, anyways, this is the last we hear of them. For a little while. Uh, Nate... And William join up with Dave Grohl of Nirvana fame. And they form the Foo Fighters. Now, the first Foo Fighters album, every instrument is played by Dave Grohl. But in the liner notes, it says William and Nate are on there. But they really didn't play on there. But they did tour the shit out of it. Uh, just saying. And, uh... Right. So... We're, you know, we're all like, just like, you know, whatever. Uh, and then uh, William gets kicked out of the band. Oh, the Foo Fighters. Right? He, they're, they're recording the second album, The Color and the Shape. And this is just hearsay. I don't have any proof. But uh, he goes back to the studio because he like left his car keys or something. I don't know exactly what it was he was going back for. And uh, Dave's buddy, Taylor Hawkins, was re-recording all the drum parts. So William was like, fuck all y'all, I'm out. And it's just what Dave Grohl wanted because his best friend from high school is now a member of the band. <laughs> Couldn't be a member of the band on the first album and first tour because he was with uh, Alanis Morissette touring the Jagged Little Pill and probably making a fortune. <laughs> you know, just saying. Anyways, so that drama happens. And uh, Jeremy and Daniel, I haven't mentioned him yet, uh, Dan Horner, he's the second guitarist or the lead guitar player I'm not sure who plays leads in this band there's not a lot of solos so I'm not sure but uh him and Jeremy start working together the lead singer Jeremy and uh William is now out of a contract so he rejoins these guys and they're all friends right and uh you know, Jeremy's gotten over himself, uh, you know. And so they re record an album, and it's called How It Feels to Be Something On. I remember when I got it, I was listening to it at my buddy Rick's house, sitting in uh, his room. No one else was there but me and Andrea Payne. Uh, I'm listening to it, and she's like, so, you know, we're still in our 20s. We're kids at this point. But uh, she's like, so... How is it? You know, she didn't listen to him. She was listening to it at the time, but she didn't know how it made me feel. But I was like, this is awesome. So glad to have the boys back, you know, just so glad to have this band back. And uh, there's a lot of great songs on that album, like Guitar and Video Games, Roses and Wine, I think it is. Maybe it's Roses and Water, I'm not sure. Uh, 
it's been a long time since I've listened to them because they haven't put out anything new, except they did a 7-inch, I don't know what you call that digitally, uh, one side is Circus Survive, the other side is a new song by, well, a new song by Circus Survive, and a new song by Sunny Day Real Estate, and that was just a few years ago, so, you know, I'm hoping there's something new coming out from them, but I don't know. It hasn't happened yet. Uh, anyways, yeah, and, and I got it digitally, so, <laughs> anyhow, uh, so, yeah, How It Feels to Be Something On comes out, and it's like, this is rad, and then they put out a live album, you know, just Sunny Day Real Estate Live, and, you know, they play all the, all the ones you want them to, plus some of the new ones, and some that you've never heard before, and it's just cool, it's a live album, uh, they attribute the bass playing to a guy named Joe Bass, who doesn't exist. <laughs> I guess he just didn't want to be like the guy that played bass on that tour, just did not want anything to do with it. But because they released this album, it got them out of their contract with Sub Pop. They fulfilled their contract. So, you know, it's not like they broke up and then didn't fulfill their contract. Oh, and Jeremy had put out a couple solo albums. I'm not sure if that helped to fulfill the contract, I'm not sure, but the live album was the the one that got them out of it. You know, they now they don't owe Sub Pop anything. We've paid our dues. We've done everything. You know, they got all the equipment. They got all the all the merchandise. All the the music video. I think there's only one. Uh, they did have an appearance on 120 minutes and. It's like they were there the whole show, which is pretty rad. I, you know, 120 minutes with a show on MTV. Uh, yeah, the boys just hung out while other music videos were played. And then they did a couple or three live performances, which is, you know, totally rad. And if Sub Pop got them that, that's, you know, they did their part too. I mean, they bought them equipment. They put them all out on tour. They, you know, they did everything they could to promote this band just there weren't a lot of people out there buying the records and that's you know but they fulfilled their contract with sub pop and the three of them uh put out a new album called the rising tide in like uh, it's got to be 2001 2002 somewhere around there uh, I was living in Chino Valley with my girlfriend, and uh, I was working at the Petro station. So it's it's 2000, 2001. Anyways, and this album called The Rising Tide is just, it's it sounds like Sunny Day Real Estate. There's so many good songs on there. I'll, I'll, I'll direct you to Snibe, S-N-I-B-E. It's got this awesome bass part that opens the song. It's like doom, doom, do, 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 and then the drums come in. Oh, it's it's awesome. And uh, you know, this is those three dudes again. And also in the interim between how it feels and uh, the rising tide, Jeremy, William, and Nate of the Foo Fighters got back together put out an album called The Fire Theft. And it sounds just like Sunny Day Real Estate without Dan. You know, there's not that second guitar player. Uh, yeah, this is weird. But uh, the Rising Tide uh, bass duties were done by Dan and and Jeremy. But, you know, live they had to have another guy. And I actually got to see them on that tour. And fun story, like... All my friends had moved away from our little town. You know, they're chasing their dreams. I don't blame them. Uh, but uh, the show's at this outdoor club in Phoenix in the spring. And uh, I, you know, I coerced my friend, uh, Zach, to, uh, let's go down there. Let's go to the show. I'll pay for the tickets. You pay for the gas. I'll drive. Because he hated driving to Phoenix. So, uh, I drove, him and I, I bought the tickets, and we're there at the, at the show, it's No Knife, I don't know if they ever did anything, I should look them up, 
you know, on the Amazon Music digital music app. Maybe they've got, maybe they've done something. I don't know. But they sounded great. I really enjoyed their set. Uh, and uh, I ran into Jeremy and Brian there. Now, Jeremy is the guy I talk about in some of my other videos because he hated all the music I liked until, you know, he run into him at a show where he's there because he secretly liked it. He just had to be a dissenter. <laughs> you know, he just had to be. And uh Brian, like I was over at his house when I came back to Arizona after uh, about a year in jail in Iowa. I came back to Arizona and I'm sitting in his garage where his drum set was set up just over there so I could play drums basically and I didn't really know the guy I didn't really know him but turns out I really liked him Brian Getz is a cool dude anyways uh um he's got a, just a stack of loose CDs not in cases just loose and I find the first two Sunny Day Real Estate albums in there I'm like wait you like this band he's like oh yeah dude they're totally rad and I'm like how did we not know each other back when they were, you know, I knew of him. I, I've seen his face. I've hung out with him. But we never once spoke about it. So I always thought I was alone, you know. And when I go to that show and there's Jeremy and Brian, they're there. And after the show, which was awesome, I mean, it was daytime in Phoenix, so it's weird. Like the show ended and the sun was still up, but it, it was spring, so it wasn't super hot. Uh, they invite us over to Brian's house and yeah, the party was on. <laughs> it's just, yeah, great times. Uh, sunny day real estate. I don't know if any of those guys are still doing anything. I honestly don't know. I should look it up. Uh, I looked on Wikipedia and say, it says, uh, sunny day real estate was, a you know, they're not together anymore. The guys might be doing something. Uh, hope I mentioned them all because it's like Jeremy Ennick, lead singer and guitar, Dan Horner on, uh, guitar, backup vocals, Nate Mendel on bass and William Goldsmith on drums for the first two albums. And then I don't know who played bass. I mean, cause Nate was out and it doesn't sound the same without him. I mean, cause he, he noodled around in the verses and stuff. It just sounds so cool. Like, <sighs> the rhythm section of Sunny Day Real Estate on their first two albums deserves a huge shout out because they're just so good. Like, like the playing is just so good. The writing of their parts is just so good. That's all I'm saying. Uh, the guitar playing is great too. I mean, that's how you get to all the bits, of course. But, uh, yeah, I think that's about it on this band. Uh, let's just say, uh, if you like this content, hit the like button. If you want more of it, hit the subscribe button. And if you think any of your friends might enjoy this content, share it with them. And hit the bell for notifications. Because I post a lot. This is my second video today, and uh, I hope you all enjoy, and I hope you're all staying safe. Peace.